Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode of Bass Fishing Declassified. We're gonna take a look at one of my all-time favorite patterns that is not just great for the summer period, but truly works from pre-spawn into the fall months. It is one of those things that can be extremely easy to identify, but yet often goes completely overlooked. So let's dive into it. No matter where you're located throughout the country, if your lake has grass in it, regardless of whether it's submergent or emergent, you probably will have floating grass mats that form. And when I say floating grass mats, I'm talking about grass that has been ripped up floated to the surface and pushed into a bank. You know, if you've got emergent or submergent grasses, you will have these because any place you go, you're gonna have high winds and storms that can rip grass up and push them into a bank. If you're on a lake that's got a lot of boat pressure, the same thing will happen. The boats are cutting through the grass all day long. Most grass will float to the surface and therefore the wind just pushes it in any direction. And that's something to keep in mind. A lot of times you will find these mats located in one portion of the lake. You go back a day or two later and they're completely gone. It's because they may have floated to the other side of the lake. So you need to pay attention to where you're looking for these mats. But generally the best places to find them are any place you've got a big grass flat. I mean, you know, yes, the, the grass can get ripped up and float to the surface and move all across the lake. But generally speaking, it's gonna stay in the area where those grass flats are. So if you have a big grass flat or a big bay that's got grass, a lot of times the houses, you know, with their docks and the shorelines will have grass mats that get pushed into those. You know, some of your best high percentage places to look outside of finding generally where the grass is, is anywhere where you have a little bit of current flow. And that current does not have to be natural current. I'm not talking about current that comes through a river. Yes, that will help, but current that is wind driven. So if you have a point that sticks out, the current will get squeezed there. A lot of times that's a great place to find these grass clumps. If you have uh, maybe a seawall point, docks can be great, lay down trees can be great. Anything that sticks up out of the water when the grass goes by it will get caught by it and therefore form a mat around it. So I love to find places that have docks, that have grass mats that have blown into it. I love to find shorelines that have seawalls and, and hard bank cover because at that point you know there's a little bit of water underneath because that's really a key. The fish will get up into only a few inches of water, but generally speaking, the more water depth that you have under those mats will lead to better success. Now I say that with a little bit of hesitation because if you have more than six feet of water, a lot of times that's almost getting to the point where you have too much water depth. So ideally what you're looking at is two to four feet is kind of your strike zone. That's kind of the peak area to be looking at. But if you can find a shoreline that has grass mats that have floated into it with some water depth underneath it, generally speaking, you're gonna have bass that are there as well. Really quick. If you're struggling to find productive areas on your lake or are new to fishing and want to get pointed in the right direction about where to start fishing, head to our website, fishthemoment.com, and go to our Lake Breakdowns page. Here you'll find lake breakdowns from myself, Randy Blockett, and Matt Steffen. I focus on offshore breakdowns, Matt covers smallmouth, and Randy covers shallow water largemouth. These lake breakdowns provide 40 GPS waypoints that you can transfer straight to your fish finder. We give detailed area descriptions, the best conditions to fish each area, lure recommendations, and key strategies for the lake in general. We also give you guides on how to transfer the waypoints straight to your fish finder so you don't have to worry about the technology gap there. You can scroll through and find breakdowns for all four seasons of the year. And we have a lot of lakes here, so you, you probably will find most of the major lakes in this list already. However, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom and don't see your lake in one of the four seasons, you can also get a personal lake breakdown from either Randy or Matt at the bottom of the page, and you can pick any lake in the country and get 40 waypoints picked out personally by Matt or Randy. Check out our lake breakdowns at fishthemoment.com. One of the most important keys to fishing mats successfully is to identify the sunlight angle. Guys, you need to recognize that just because you have a mat doesn't mean the shade is directly underneath that mat. If the sun is not directly overhead, you're going to have a shade line that actually rotates around that mat of grass. So if you've got the sunlight hitting the front side of a mat and it's roughly at a 45 degree angle and you're in say three feet of water, 
that shade line is not going to hit the bottom of that of underneath that mat until roughly three feet back, which means the majority of your pitches should be at least three feet back into the mat. Now, keep in mind, if you're on the back side of the mat, meaning the sun is hitting the mat in front of you, the shade may actually extend out past the mat. And therefore, you may just want to be pitching right at the edge of the mat. It's something really important to keep in mind. It's something that oftentimes goes overlooked. And you can tell a lot of times if you're fishing behind other people and you know that the shade line is further back into the mat and you see them just working the edge of the mat, you can go right behind them and catch a bunch of fish if you're making further pitches back into those mats. But it's something that often goes overlooked and it's a very valuable piece of information to fish mats successfully. When you pitch your bait into these mats, one thing you need to recognize is the fact that the majority of your bites are gonna come on that initial fall. So you wanna be in a position to set the hook as soon as that bait actually falls through the top of that mat. You know, it's the act of surprising the fish into biting. It creates that reaction strike. It's a great thing to utilize, but you need to be ready for it because if you're not, you're gonna miss a lot of those bites. If you do not get a strike on that initial fall through the mat, at that point, what I'll do is I'll engage my reel, yo-yo it up a few times up and down, and that's a good way to generate a strike. One other tip for you though, is if you hear bluegill popping in the mats that you're fishing, bring your bait up to the top of the mat and just hold it there. Just hold it there and shake it against the top of the mat. A lot of times that will generate strikes and what that's doing is that's mimicking the bluegills that are popping at the top of that mat. They're eating bugs off those floating plants. So you get a lot of bluegill that are sitting upright at the top of the mat. So by holding your bait upright and shaking it up there, it looks like they're feeding on bugs and that allows the bass to come in and think they're taking advantage of that feeding bluegill and it will generate you a few extra strikes. Now this is a phenomenal summertime pattern because the fish are gonna be looking for shade, they're gonna be looking for areas to ambush bait, and it works great because a lot of times on lakes, if you have a lot of heavy boat traffic, you've got a lot of weed growth in the summer and the boats are ripping up that weed and therefore you get the mats. But it works all year round. If you can find these during the pre-spawn pattern, you're gonna have some big females that are sitting up under those mats trying to absorb heat. And the same thing happens in the fall again. You can have these mats where the fish are sitting up in super, super shallow water, trying to absorb heat, trying to get one last big meal before they go into the wintry mode. So don't think that this is just a summer thing. This can really generate a lot of strikes for you year round. You just need to recognize it and give it a chance. It's one of those things that once you identify the pattern, it's really easy to, to locate more places on the lake that are similar. And they're very, very uh, easy and efficient to fish as well because you only need to fish you know, each mat with a few casts before you can move on to the next one. A lot of these mats will also come in contact with other forms of vegetation, whether they're grass, whether they're bulrushes, cattails, you know, there's a lot of other vegetation where these mats get blown up against it because those are emergent vegetations. And those create really high percentage places to fish. And not only that, they create very good places to get your bait through the canopy. If you're fishing very thick floating grass mats, a lot of times the best place to get your bait through is to find areas where you have that mat meeting something that's floating, whether that's a bulrush, a cattail, lily pad clump, and those are areas where you have just a little bit of gap to get your bait to slide through to the fish that are underneath. But the key is, just like with fishing submerged grasses, anytime you have a, a contact place between two types of grass or even more than two types of grass, those create high percentage places to look. The same holds true for this. Any place where that mat meets another type of emergent grass, that's a place that the fish are gonna be holding. So make sure you put, you put some casts in those general areas. Let's take a closer look at the tackle to use for this. Right off the bat, one of the things that you're gonna want is a heavy action rod, something that you use for pitching. You know, it's one thing to get a bait into these areas, it's another thing to get the fish out. So you want a heavy action rod. You know, I really like to go with at least a 7.4, if not a 7.9 heavy action rod, something that's built for just beefier baits, heavy line, and dragging fish out of heavy cover. 
I like to match it up here with, this is an Abu Garcia Revo ALF. It's an 8.0 to one speed gear ratio. So it's a really fast reel and I like that because you know, you get the bites, you wanna turn that fish and get them coming at you. So once you've got the rod and reel figured out, you're gonna to wanna to probably stick with braided line. In this case, I've got here 50 pound X5 Berkeley braided line. You can step it up a little bit if you want, but I've been fishing really clear water. So I like to kind of drop it down. Plus the majority of the mats that I'm fishing are just floating eel grass and floating uh, like pad stems, nothing that's gonna really be too thick. I can get the majority of those fish out with relatively lighter braided line, uh, but you really should go with braided line because the key with that is when you set the hook, that braid will cut through a lot of that grass, allowing you to bring the fish at them. From a bait standpoint, you know, there's a couple of ways to go about this. You can do just a straight Texas rig like this. This is just a Berkeley Pit Boss on an extra heavy EWG hook with anywhere from a half to two ounce weight, depending on how thick the cover is. But one thing that I do like to go though is with a punch rig. This is a punch rig weight. You can see there's a little nub right here that's built to add a skirt of your choice. You just connect those together and it almost gives you the same presentation as a jig. You get the same bulkiness of the skirt, but it's still a Texas rig, which allows that bait to slither through the weeds a lot easier. So those are a couple of things I like to point out. The one thing I'm gonna add with this, and I truly believe this is really important. With your weight, I do not believe that you should use a bobber stop in this case. I think you should go with a peg it, which is just a little rubber sleeve that you slide into the weight and then you cut the ends off. But the reason I say that is when you're talking about these heavier weights, so anything in that three quarter ounce, ounce and a half size, if you have a bobber stop, when you set the hook, you're gonna slide that, that weight away from the bait. And all you did was push the bobber stop up. So if the bobber stop is here, that weight will swing freely down and it can knock the hook out of that fish's mouth. You'd be surprised by how much force an ounce weight can have when it slides freely down the line. So in my opinion, by, by using a peg it system, when that weight separates, it moves away from the fish and they can no longer use that weight as leverage to shake the hook. I really think that's important. The last choice of bait would be a frog, guys. This is just a Spro Bronzei frog. I think a frog can be really good under your uh, under the conditions where your mats are not too thick. You know, if you're fishing a lot of isolated mats that are only three, four feet in diameter, a frog can be a great way to generate those strikes, especially if there's less water underneath. If you're fishing deeper mats, a lot of times those fish are not right under the surface. But if you're fishing shallow water, smaller, thinner mats, a frog can lead some explosive action. Well, thanks for watching today's episode of Bass Fishing Declassified. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you check out other episodes on the channel. There's a lot of good information that you can find here. We're sharing a lot of information that other people would have considered classified for a long period of time. So guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll have another episode coming out soon.